At 79 years old, Alan Fotheringham has pretty much seen it all, especially when it comes to Canadian and American politics. Famous for his biting satire and political commentary, he is best known for his back page column in Maclean's magazine, appearances on Front Page Challenge, and numerous books and articles. Dr. Foth, as he later became known, was a journalistic tour de force during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and an ongoing pain in the butt to almost every politician to ever set foot on Parliament Hill. In an era where politicians and pundits partied together till dawn on the company tab, and a pinch and tickle was the rule, not a crime, Fotheringham managed to forge the most famous of love-hate friendships with the biggest names in the news. Never one to be overly influenced by an elaborate three-martini lunch, he nonetheless remained true to his role as public watchdog and raconteur. Last week, at a private home in Vancouver, near his alma mater of UBC, Fotheringham launched his ninth book, a 2011 collection of memoirs entitled Boy From Nowhere, A Life in 91 Countries. Surrounded by family and friends, Fotheringham didn't miss a beat when asked to comment on topics like President Obama, the Occupy Wall Street movement, and the recent decimation of the federal liberals under Michael Ignatieff. In this rare one-on-one -on -one interview, it's clear that Fotheringham is much more than a clever-mouthed media magnate from a time gone by. He forever remains the one-of-a-kind Canadian godfather of journalism who, as the saying goes, is often copied, but will never, ever be duplicated. Ninety-one countries on someone else's money. Yeah. The greatest thing that's ever been invented in the history of mankind is the expense account. I used to go out and drink with cabinet ministers, right? And I didn't have to be told, this is on the record, and this is on, uh, off the record, because they were smart enough to know that, that if I uh, ran something, you know, naughty and everything, they wouldn't see me again. Today, uh, you don't have that. You don't have a, a columnist sitting down having a beer with cabinet ministers because there's too many re reporters, the internet, the Facebook, all these things, they're all terrified of it. The uh, security, uh, you'd never find a prime minister walking down Parliament Hill with reporters. We thought when he was elected that we had a new, uh, Americans had a new Kennedy and uh, the whole breakthrough, uh, of course, uh, having a black man as president. And uh, he seems to have gone to sleep in the, in the last year. The Republicans are running around with nine different candidates, and none of them uh, w would we like to see running the world, leading the world as the American leader too. And uh, Obama is uh, floundering. I, I don't know why. He should check with me for advice. Well, first of all, find out who are the real protesters and, and find out which 50% of them are simply, simply homeless people who are down there because they have no place else to sleep. They've taken advantage of what was a legitimate protest uh, against the fact that 1% of the population, of course, has all the money and the 99, the rest of us, are not homeless, but we want a, a little share of the goodies. Well, they got what they deserve, the, the liberals, as, as I call them, uh, trying to bring in a, a guy from the States that didn't understand the Canada and, and Canadians didn't understand him. And now they're about to put in Bob Ray, the most cynical man they've got in the party, who claims he doesn't want to be leader and he's lusting for it. He's lusting for it. His drool is running down his lips. Well, it's, it's going down. Europe is uh, crashing, as we know, the, the Germans who are running Europe, trying to get even for the fact that they lost two world wars. And the American uh, economy is going in. Our banking system is the most solid one in the world, and we're, we're pretty safe. Canadians are safe.
People ask me, you know, young guys trying to get in the trade with me, uh, should they go to journalism school? And they say, no way, you can't teach journalism. You can't teach journalism. The way to uh, learn about the world, the best education there is, is travel. Travel, and I've been to 91 countries, and that's why I'm so intelligent, because I've seen 91 countries, and I know that I live in the best country in the world, Canada, because I've compared it to all the others. And lastly, what's the most important thing in life? Honesty, especially in journalism.